Who have been the choreographers of your life? Was it you? Probably not. We're going to talk about it on today's podcast. Hi, my name is Michael Johnson. I'm a ballroom dance professional, a life coach, and a peak performance expert. I'm part of a group of motivated people who are dedicated to attaining emotional mastery and unlocking our full potential. We've realized life is a dance. The ups and downs can spin you out of your mind, but it's time to take back control. It's time to become a lifer. We don't believe others are responsible for how we feel. In fact, we don't believe anyone can make us feel anything. We are a new breed of overachievers. Emotional mastery is our journey, and unlocking our full potential is the key. Welcome to the journey. We are lifers, and this is Magic for Life. What's up, lifers? Michael Johnson here with the Magic for Life podcast, and I'm so glad you joined me today. And uh, hopefully you've been enjoying the YouTube videos. So if you're listening to this on iTunes or Spotify or Stitcher, make sure you go over to YouTube and like and subscribe. And of course, you know, don't forget to hit that notification button because if you don't, you won't know when we put out podcasts. We try to get them out about, oh, two or three times a week, uh, usually about three times a week. And uh, we don't want you to miss a single time. And we've got some amazing things planned we have some cool stuff coming somebody walked over here uh back into our world and saw a little bit of our area and they said what the heck happened to you guys recently and uh and we're like well we're in creation mode right now we're in uh we're in the middle of creating uh just just this amazing amazing product for you guys we cannot wait to get it out for you it is awesome we are so stoked anyway i can't tell you more about it yet but it's coming and i'm so excited to get it to you but just keep listening uh hopefully you're enjoying the content that's why you're here and make sure you share it with your friends because honestly that's one of my goals is to be able to change uh people's lives in a dramatic way so that they can go and start changing other people's lives really if we could each change 10 people's world then the world would change in about 5 to 7 years the world would change in about five to seven years. Yes, I said that twice because it is a big deal. Guys, don't sit back and think that you can't make a difference. If you just change one person's life, it would change everything. So we're going to jump in. I know that's beside the point. I said in the intro, you know, who has been the choreographer of your life and was it you? And along the way, I know that a lot of times we get to where we're at, like you're here right now and you're in this moment and you're here because you wanted to learn something and we've talked about things that maybe have juiced you. I love emotions. I believe emotions are at the core of every action, everything that you do. You do everything you do in your world because you want to feel some way. Even when you feel blah, you're trying to feel some way to be able to accomplish what you want. And so you have to understand that I believe that emotions are at the core of what you need to work on and what you need to fix. And so my question to you is, have you been choreographing your life? Did you up to this point choreograph your life? Now, you know, those of you that have followed me and have known about me, uh, you know I'm a dancer, you know I'm a ballroom dancer, I will never not be a dancer. That doesn't happen. Uh, once I became and once I could actually identify as a dancer, I will always be a dancer. There is a piece of me that will always have that in my soul and I would never get rid of it. It is so much a part of me. And along the way, one of the things that I learned to do in dance and being a, a choreographer, dancing at a high level in the professional ranks, was how to choreograph. And I, it, it was a skill that I learned from my mentors and the people that I looked up to. And uh, you have to learn how to do it. It wasn't just something that everybody was good at. In fact, I had my fair share of choreography done for me where it was like, yeah, that's kind of good. And then I hated dancing it. I hated doing it. And, uh, you know, so as I was going through my dance career, I would say at the point when I went and turned professional, as, as soon as I started to go into the professional ranks, we uh, changed our routines, my, my uh, partner and I, and got brand new routines that were specific for us and meant to be out on the professional floor because as with any professional uh, event, things are different when you get on the floor. Things are not, or sorry, on the professional floor, things are not how they were when you danced as an amateur. 
or when you played collegiate sports. If you go into the professional ranks, uh, everything changes. And honestly, you know, I saw an interview with a, a basketball player and they, they asked him, hey, what's different now that you're playing in the pro ranks? And he says, honestly, everybody's good. In fact, everybody's amazing. And so the level of how you have to prepare and what you have to do to uh, take it to the next level is so different when you're dancing, or sorry, when you're playing basketball in the pro ranks. And, I, and it's the same in dance. Honestly, in the pro ranks, everything changes. Everybody is good. And it's no longer about whether you're better than somebody else. It's about how you're going to take your dancing or your uh, sport to the next level and be able to rise above the greatness that is already out there. And that's huge. Now for dance, this is a big deal because as we got our choreography, we danced it probably for two, three years and we weren't your, uh, phenomenon couple. We didn't come out and start winning right away. I didn't have this amazing success story. And I actually, frankly, had a ton of success prior to that as an amateur. And so I kind of expected to walk into the pro ranks and be like, okay, I'm the, the next best thing. And it's amazing how many, like if we just even take basketball, like we were just talking about, how many people actually uh, didn't actually have that success. You know, you look at Kobe Bryant, one of the greatest basketball players. I'm a fan. And uh, he didn't have massive success when he entered into the pro ranks. Uh, his first season was maybe not amazing. He was there. He did some stuff, but it really wasn't anything. And a lot of people uh, have done videos. You can look them up on YouTube and they hone it into this one game, you know, and when everything kind of clicked and it turned on and then it was then he was gone from that point on and uh, just created some amazing things in his career. Well, as I was going through my dancing progression, we started dancing into the pro ranks. We made no headway. We didn't make any finals. We were lucky and excited when we made a cut. Uh, we got to the point in that two, three year time where we were looking at the marks and we were having to find success in just getting a mark. Did a judge look at us and feel like we should be in the next round? Oh, hallelujah, when that happened. And sometimes it didn't happen. And it was disturbing. And the interesting part was that we <clears throat> got to this point about two and a half, three years in to Dancing Pro. And we were bound and determined. We were gonna keep going. We were not going to give up. This was our goal. We were going to be the champions. And I remember a practice where we kind of sat down and, and we weren't happy about what we were doing. And I remember saying to my partner and I looked at her and I said, you know, I just don't like that part. I don't like this piece. And she's like, well, let's just change it. And I was like, well, do we need to get a lesson? and get one of our choreographers to help us. She's like, no, let's just do it ourselves. I mean, we've done, we had done a bunch of choreography for shows. We were teaching other people. We were doing choreography for them. She's like, let's just do it ourselves and let's just not say anything. They probably won't notice. And so we got into it and we started changing that one piece, but that one piece led to the next piece. And she's like, well, should we change that? And we kind of felt like, oh, you know, our coaches told us to do this. And I was like, you know, but I don't like it. I don't like what we're doing. I wasn't happy with how I was dancing. And I was getting tons of feedback from my, my mentors' mentors. And they were looking at me going, no, no, what are you doing? Stop doing that. And we didn't look at the choreography. We just trusted our coaches. We trusted the process. And I looked at it and, and the more we did, the more we just actually went in and made the decision. We said, you know what, screw it. We're going to take everything out and we're going to choreograph our own stuff. That was a big deal. You know, like we're going to just put in all the stuff we love. We are going to actually live our dancing choreography in such a way that we love what we're doing. And so we went through uh, very quickly, actually, it really, once we made the choice, it wasn't that big of a deal because we decided, Hey, you know what? We're going to take out <clears throat> all the pieces that we hate, which actually ended up being the whole routine. And 
we're going to keep things that we love. And so there were pieces and parts that we absolutely loved to dance. And we decided to put all those in. And it was really interesting. We practiced and we rehearsed. We kept doing our lessons and we kept getting our coaches to work on our dancing. But the more we did that, the more the coaches that we had started looking at us and going, yeah, I really like that. Oh yeah, this is really great. And they had forgotten that they didn't do it because it kind of looked, I mean, obviously we had some of their style, some of their uh, tendencies. And so they didn't realize that we had changed everything. We got out to our first comp and about, about a month later, after making a whole bunch of changes over a ton of dances and literally that comp we made the final and it was the first time we made the final and there were a lot of other challenges that went into that I was hurt and uh, um, not on purpose but I just my body wasn't right and uh, we made the final and it was kind of ridiculous. And our coaches, um, a bunch of different coaches came up to us afterwards and were like, it's about time you started dancing like that. And I remember as they walked away and we looked at each other, I, I kind of looked at her and we both kind of laughed about it because the funniest part about it was we made it finally when we started doing what we loved. And it set me on a, such an interesting path for choreography because I started to look at it differently. Now, understand we were pros, we were teaching, we were getting education on how to choreograph and how to do things. And, uh, and it was a, a natural rite of ascension, I think at that point, it was time for us to do that. And none of our coaches told us to do it at that time because uh, who knows, maybe they just didn't think we were ready for it or, what I'm not, I'm not sure, uh, but my question for you today is quite simple. Who did your choreography? And what choreography are we talking about? Uh, you are obviously, maybe you're a dancer out there, so I know I have dancers watching me, but maybe you're not a dancer. Maybe you're a business person. Maybe you do play basketball. Maybe your thing is Rubik's Cubes. My son loves to do Rubik's Cubes, uh, so you have to look out for his course. It's coming soon. It's going to be awesome. Um, and what What's your thing and who did your choreography? Did you actually do your own life choreography? But I want to take it a step further. You every day live with emotions. And you are the choreographer of those emotions. Now, what the heck does that mean? Because I know I'm, I'm out there on a limb, right? But you have routines every day that you do. You get up, you do the same thing every day. Maybe you look at social media, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever it is you're doing, and you put yourself into the same routine. You know, if you're a mom, you have to get up at a certain time and you take the kids to school, you make them breakfast, you go through the routine of their grumpiness for not getting up on time or staying up too late. And so they take it out on you, moms. Or maybe you do the same routine. You get up, you try to get your body moving again because maybe it's not listening to you the way that it used to. But you have a routine of emotional states that you go through. Maybe you watch the news and it gets you frustrated and upset or worried about what's going to happen to our world. And you feel a certain emotion. And some of these emotional programs that you've created through your own choreography that you made up. Oh, wait a second. Did you make that up? Or did somebody else? Well, who could have done it? Let's think about it right now. If you have a moment, I don't know if you have a journal or if you have a piece of paper, but if you don't, it's okay. Take out a thing, of, uh, write it on your uh, phone. It's okay. Just take out a little thing of notes on your phone and, and write yourself a little message. And just jot down who in your world has ever been responsible for choreographing your emotional world? Who? Who's it been? Uh, it's been your parents, right? Could have been that. Maybe it was more mom or more dad, or maybe it was a combination of both. Maybe it was grandma and grandpa. Uh, maybe it was your friends because you rebelled against your parents early. And so maybe it was the friends you hung out with. In fact, maybe for some of you, maybe it was a set of friends for a while that you hung out with and you went, oh yeah, they're choreographing my emotional world. And then you made a change 
or maybe you didn't and you're still there now. Uh, was it your family members? Was it your extended family? Was it somebody else in your world, your teachers for your gymnastics class that you went to, or maybe you did a dance growing up and uh, maybe it's the social media now. You know, I'm watching it happen, and a lot of you are watching this live. There's some, you know, there's a big conflict going on in the world, and the media is eating it up and blowing it up. And can you imagine what kind of choreography they are creating in the world for people's emotions? Because so many people do not have control of their own emotional systems. In fact, they're plugging into the media to feel. So the media is taking advantage of it and going, hey, you need to feel this. You need to be worried. You need to be afraid. You need to do this. And it's all got some sort of reasoning behind it. But did you create the reason? I don't know. So do you have a significant other? Maybe they create, maybe they for the last 10 years or 20 years are creating the emotional choreography that you run through on a regular basis. Now, just like a dancer, we practice our routines. Now we do it, and I believe in a positive way. We are creating our choreography and our routines uh, for these dancers that I've been privileged to work with for years and years. And just like I do with my coaching clients, you create positive routines, things that are good, things that you know are helping your body and helping the show, right? What show? The show, your show, right? And those routines are important, but sometimes we have bad routines. What's bad? What's good? You decide. That's not my problem, right? Good and bad, that's all for you. So we go through and we create these routines and sometimes other people created the choreography for you and you're still running. I don't know how old you are, but you're still running the choreography that your parents gave you 25, 30 years ago. You're still running the choreography that maybe a bad experience with a bad teacher gave you. I know I had my fair share of bad teachers through my world and it's given me sort of a tainted view on education and it took me a while and a great mentor to get me curious again. So who did your choreography? Look at the players in your game. Now let's take it a step further. When have you been the choreographer? Thanks for tuning in on today's podcast and you're not going to want to miss part two. Hey lifers, we expect upgrades to the base operating functions of the things like our phones, cars, and even refrigerators. Why then has it not been made a priority that we upgrade the operating systems of our emotional states? We dance around the subject of emotional mastery from a young age. We have so much more knowledge in today's world, yet we're still teaching outdated methods of emotional education, if any are being taught at all. It's time for a change. It's time for an upgrade to our emotional education. Let me help you learn how to do that. Pick up your free copy of Every Minute at everyminutebook.com.